Good morning, my friends. My name is Carl Zipper. I run the backwoods engineering programs here at Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey, the township of Lakes. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about the shear lashing. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the more underrated lashings of the common knots and lashings. Um, you know, but there's a whole lot you can do with it. Um, the more obvious but less useful, you know, purpose you can put it to is if you have two spars that are parallel to each other and you want to lash them together and you know, there's a gap in between um, where you want to lash them. If they're parallel and there's no gap, like down here, then you would use the, the round lashing, which, um, you know, is covered in a different video that I've made. Um, but, you know, if there's a gap, you use the shear lashing because you can get it a bit tighter than you can get a round lashing. Um, that said, you know, for a multitude of reasons, I'd rather just use one long spar um, than join two shorter ones together parallel, you know, if I have the opportunity. Um, the more useful application for the shear lashing, you know, is when you're constructing um, an A-frame type of structure or what we call a pair of shear legs. Um, that's, in fact, where the lashing gets its name from. Um, you know, and A-frames and shear legs are useful for a lot of different applications um, when you're working on pioneering projects, you know, both big and small. You know, so let's, um, let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that you're going to do to tie a shear lashing is you start out by tying a clove hitch around one of your two spars that you're going to join. Um, to tie the clove hitch is very easy. You wrap around the spar with your rope such that you have an X on the top. Once you have that X, you keep wrapping around. And when you come back around to that X, you take your end of your rope and you go right underneath the middle of it. And then cinch it up and make it look pretty. Um, make sure you give yourself a relatively um, good sized tail on your knot. I like to work with anywhere from four to six inches of tail. Um, if you leave it too short, you know, the knot could come undone more easily. So once we have our, um, our clove hitch at the beginning, the next step in our lashing is we have to do our wrapping turns. The wrapping turns are what hold the two spars together um, in the lashing. For the shear lashing, the wrapping turns are pretty easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to work around in a figure eight type pattern in between the two spars. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. One, um, one handy trick to make this a bit easier for you is start at the bottom of your lashing and work up towards the end of the spars because that way you don't have to pull all the slack through. Instead, you can just take the middle of your rope, pass it over the end, and bring it down here. Um, so I'm going to do my figure eights. Um, you know, the big question is how many of these do I do in order to end up with a good strong lashing? Um, you know, this is a lashing where every wrapping turn you do adds more strength to it because the lashing is going to want to fail by sliding. And um, the more wraps you have, you know, the more surface area you're going to have where the rope engages with the spar. And so the more resistance you'll have to that slipping. Um, I usually wind up doing, you know, anywhere between 6 and 10. It depends in large part on how much... Depends in large part on how much, um, you know, force I, I expect the lashing to see in use. Um, if it's not going to get loaded up too bad, you know, 6 is plenty. But if you're going to be, you know, lifting pianos or something with a pair of shear legs, um, better to go with 8 or 10. So... Uh, Usually what I wind up doing is I just, you know, pick the rope size that I think will be about right, and I, I try and use the whole rope um, when I'm making the lashing. And I'm getting pretty close to that point now where I'm going to be done with the wrappings. I've got one, two, three, four, and I've got seven wraps here, you know, so that's, that's plenty since I'm just doing this as a demonstration. Um, once I've done my wrapping turns, the next thing I have to do is I have to do the frapping turns. Um, what the fraps do is they don't go around either of the spars. They go in between here, and they wrap around the wrapping turns, and they pull everything a little bit tighter. Um, so to do the fraps, and I wish this little nub wasn't here, because it's certainly complicating things for me, but it is what it is. To do the fraps, I come in between, like so. And every time, you know, I come around a corner here, I give it a nice hard pull. Um, how many frapping turns should I do, you know, you might ask? The answer is two. Um, if you do more than that, you know, you're just doing extra work that you don't have to, because two good frapping turns will pull the lashing plenty tight. So, 
So I did my clove hitch. I did my six to 10 wraps. I did my two fraps. I only have one thing left to do to finish up this lashing, and that is to tie off my rope. Um, I'm gonna do that with another clove hitch. I can do it, you know, on either one of these spars. It doesn't matter much where. Um, but it does matter, you know, that my ending clove hitch be in as close as I can get it to the wrapping turns. Um, the best way to do that, I've found, is to make my clove hitch a little different from how I did it in the beginning. I'm going to do it by making um, what are called half hitches around the spar. A half hitch is a very easy thing to do. Take your rope, start wrapping it around the spar, and then come up and in between like this. Then pull it tight. Um, this right here is the half hitch. Right now it's obviously too far away, but it's very easy to bring down tight. All you got to do is just pull it in and then, you know, work it back and forth a little bit like this to get it tightened back up. So that's a half hitch. Um, I did one. I'm going to do a second one now. And once I've done that second one, I'm going to wind up with a very nice clove hitch here, although you're not really going to be able to see it on camera because it's down in between the two spars. Uh, just take my word for it, you know? A face like this, how could you not trust it, right? Um, I do have a little bit of leftover rope here, you know, so what I'm going to do, the last thing, is I'm just going to wrap this rope up a little bit so it's not hanging down and looking ugly. Um, when I wrap it up, I can only wrap it around one spar, not both. The reason for that is going to become obvious in just a moment. So, once you've wrapped it around a couple times, Oof. And yeah, you're just about out. Just take that end and tuck it in here so it doesn't come too loose. All right, so that's my shear lashing. Um, now, you might have heard me say back at the beginning, you know, that this is a great lashing for tying A-frames um, and shear legs, which is basically just a, a very big, very sturdy A-frame. Um, so you might be confused because these spars are parallel to each other. You know, they look nothing like the letter A. Um, you know, we're going to solve that problem now. Once your shear lashing is done, you tie it with the spars parallel. Now you can take it and you can bend it apart. And you wind up, you know, with the top of your A-frame. Um, the next step to do would be obviously to lash a third spar across the bottom. For that, you'd use square lashings. Um, you know, what bending it apart does is that gets the lashing even tighter than it was when they were parallel because it twists everything. You know, and it makes it harder for it to slip. Um, you can really hang a lot of weight, you know, off an A-frame that's tied, you know, using a shear lashing at the top. Um, you know, you could, you could attach a block and tackle up here and lift some, you know, heavy logs or rocks or, you know, use it to help you stand up a big tower that's lying on its side or, you know, any number of other, you know, contraptions that your mind could cook up. Um, it's much, much better, you know, to put a shear lashing at the top of your A-frame or your shear legs than it is to do, you know, any other lashing. Um, I, I'm really, you know, beating this dead horse here because I, I've seen a lot of people over the years you know, build their A-frames and their shear legs, you know, with a square lashing or a diagonal lashing at the top. And you're just, you know, you're giving up a lot of strength by doing it that way. Um, doing it this way requires you to know what you're doing before you start, because the shear lashing has to be the first one that you tie. You know, but you wind up with, with such a better result that um, it's really the only way, you know, that the thinking man or woman um, would do it. So, with that, um, I hope you've learned how to tie the shear lashing. I hope you've learned a thing or two about it as well. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hello there, my friends. Uh, my name's Carl Zipper. I'm coming to you here from Mount Alamuchi Scout Reservation in Byram, New Jersey, the land of lakes. Uh, or, ah, nah, it's not the land of lakes. That's Wisconsin. Uh, that's butter. That's butter, too, yeah. Uh, 